Welcome back to the channel. In tonight's video, I'm going to be doing an installation video about these aftermarket purchased from Amazon bed cleats on my 2020 Ford F-250. And this video should be relevant to my other fellow Ford modern pickup truck owners out there. Wow, that's a mouthful. But first things first, I think it's only appropriate that we let the trolls get in the comment section and hate on us Ford guys, so be my guest trolls. But at the end of the day, I think we know whose truck's going to be running. God, I'm starting a war. All in good fun, though. Anyway, back on topic here. So this is an F-250. In theory, it's designed to hold three-quarters of a ton of weight in the bed. Now, I don't know what the exact numbers are. It might be higher. It might be lower. Uh, to the note-alls, please chime in. But one of the shortcomings of this pickup truck from the factory is even though it can hold all that weight, all you have is four factory tie-downs. Of course, unless you pay the extra money to get these when you build your truck, but you just have two little tie-downs in the front and two little tie-downs in the rear. Now, I can't tell you how many times I wish I had extra tie-downs. And this is obviously going to solve that problem. So a kit like this, I think, goes anywhere between, I think you get a cheap kit for $40, and if you get it from Ford, I, I'd expect you to pay upwards of $200. But these cleats are part of the Ford box link system. Now, uh, what is the box link system? So basically these cleats tie into this mounting plate, right? So these are lockable, which I think is a little bit silly, but I, I get it, it's part of the box link system. So you twist the key, lift up this little tab right here, and then this cleat will slide off the bracket like so. So these are what we're gonna be mounting. These are gonna be uh, mounted into the bed, or the, the bed side rails, whatever. Well, the bed, right? Because these are the side rails, this is the bed. Anyway, with the box link system, there are other accessories that you can tie into these plates. For example, one that I think is pretty cool, they do have ATV ramps. So how that works, there's an ATV ramp, I think, that goes on one side, ATV ramp that goes on the other side, so you take out these cleats, and then I guess there's hangers. I am really curious, though, if you can lock the ramps into the side to prevent theft. I'm not 100% sure about that. But they also sell, like, a bed divider, so you can divide the front half and the rear half of the bed. I think there's also, like, a flip gate, right, a uh, tailgate extender. I think that also ties into these, and also some cargo netting. So... If it's right for you, it's right for you, but these cleats themselves, I think, are going to be the most applicable to most normal guys out there. So first thing I want to cover is the mounting hardware. What size is the mounting hardware? So I have my little thread checker out here, and I did check this. So this is an M6 by 1.0 bolt, in case you're curious. Uh, and another difficulty that I may run into here is... I installed this factory drop-in bed liner myself. Didn't have a bed liner in the back, but one of the problems I have is the mounting holes. Let's see where these cleats are obviously going to go in the white spots in the side of the bed. But uh, the mounting holes aren't perfectly centered with the holes in the bed liner. So I may have to cut the bed liner a little bit. Not 100% sure. We'll see what happens. So without further ado, let's get into this install. That's going to start by installing or mounting these brackets. All right, now for the fun part, the installation. And this is especially gonna be difficult because of this bed liner. So I already did one cleat, and the first thing that I've learned, if you do have a bed liner, this thing is flexible. You can pull this and move it out of the way. So if you need to get in there, just you could throw a wedge back here. You can move this bed liner around to give you access. Or of course, you could always notch out a little hole to give you a little bit better access here. So first things first, to make this installation job a bit easier, we're gonna remove the cleat from the bracket. So simply take your key, quarter turn, lift up the latch on the bottom of the cleat, and then take your two thumbs and slide the cleat forward. It may be in there a little tight. Now that we've removed the cleat, I guess the question is, which way is up and which way is down? This kit came with no instructions, but every picture online that I have seen shows the lock cylinder facing down. So we're gonna take this oval hole and that's gonna be facing down towards the bed. So, these mounting holes, there's four mounting holes, you can only see two of them because of the camera angle. These are not pre-tapped, and to the best of my knowledge, this is aluminum. So, these are steel metric bolts. If you want to do this the machinist way, get yourself the proper tap, 
and get in here and tap every one of these holes out. Now for probably 95% of us out there, we're not gonna do that. So I found that the easiest way to do this, get yourself an impact driver. You're gonna need a T30, get yourself a nice long skinny extension. And what you do, take your bracket, start with the easiest to access hole first, which for me is gonna be off to the right just a little bit here. Let me lock the camera in, make sure you guys got a good shot. Is that too bright? I think that's all right. So again, oval facing down, take the bracket, slide it in here. We're gonna start with this hole, which this is the easiest one for me to get to. So I'm gonna get that little fastener lined up in the hole, take two fingers, pitch it in place like a cigarette. I'm gonna take my driver, ensuring that this is as square with the truck as possible. And I'm gonna apply firm pressure and send this. just tapped its way through. Now, something important, I didn't tighten this up all the way because there are three other bolts that I do need to fasten. So I'm gonna get all three others started and then finally I'm gonna torque them all down gently. You don't wanna over torque these because you'll strip these right out of here because again, I believe we're tapping into aluminum. So now that I have all four fasteners started, this is where you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful not to over torque these, so I'm just gonna snug these up lightly. That's it. That's it. That's it. All the way down here. That's all it needs. And finally, I'm going to reinstall the cleat by simply inserting it in this open slot here, sliding it up, which it will be a little bit hard to do so. After it's up all the way, take this bottom tab, push it in, wiggle it a little bit, and then turn this key lock vertically Give this a little pull, make sure this doesn't pop out. And that is how you install a bed cleat. All right, so I just finished installing these cleats and I gotta say they came out really nice nice addition to the truck, and more importantly, they're gonna make it a lot easier to tie down cargo when I have stuff in the back of the truck here. So, a few closing thoughts. If you plan to utilize the same installation method that I used, in which you use an impact driver, it's extremely important that you don't over torque those bolts, because again, you are threading into aluminum. So be very careful. If anything, you may wanna finish tightening them those fasteners up by hand. Now, if you are in the same situation that I am in, in which you have a bed liner and you don't wanna notch the sides of the bed liner to get better access, and you don't have an impact driver, what are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna to have to get a little bit creative. You're gonna to have to use your brain a little bit here. So here was another option that I was planning maybe I was gonna use, so this is just a 3 8 inch drive ratchet with an adapter for a T30 head. See there's the T30 so that would just go right into this adapter. Something like this, this flexible nonsense, this is not going to work in this application. But you know another tool that I've had in my toolbox for probably the past 15 years that I actually ended up using today and if I didn't have the impact this is probably the main tool I would have used. So this is called a squeeze wrench. Again, I've had this for 15 years and this is literally the first time I've had a practical application for this. So this wrench is designed to get into very tight places. So you have a couple different sockets there, but there is an adapter for a T30 head. So again, if you have a situation like I have, trying to sneak in there between the bed liner and the truck itself, you can put your little T30 in there. And I mean, this takes up maybe an inch and a half of space and then you just squeeze the handle and with this low pro profile head, 
by squeezing this handle this just turns that T30. So this is a good tool for a situation like this. Now it is going to require a good bit of force to get those bolts tapped into the side of the bed. But you can also utilize this tool like a ratchet. I don't know what this goes for now. This is probably like a 10 or $15 tool, not too expensive. Now, if I did not have this bed liner in, I probably would have ended up tapping the holes. I think that probably would have been the right move and I probably would have utilized some Loctite. I'm very happy with the end result and that is the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one.